How's it going everyone? Welcome back to my Final Fantasy 16 playthrough. Wow. Alright, so I think of the last session we basically finished season one of Final Fantasy 16. I'm just equating this to a, you know, standard show, fantasy show, anime maybe. You know, like, uh, that was a pretty big arc that we just finished over there. It has been five years since the events of, you know, the basically the, essentially the first half of the game. So now we're going to continue with the second half. Clive and Jill have somehow taken uh, Sid's legacy and are trying to pay it forward, you know, trying to, trying to complete it. And I don't know. We just have to see what's in store for us. It's been five years. I don't know how much has changed. I don't know who's still alive. Uh, evidently, Otto is. Um, but other than that, a lot of the bears hate us. They don't really like us changing shit. They, they, they'd they rather just stick with the status quo than risk trying to make things better in fear of making things worse. All right. What does this guy say? Last I saw, he was in the mess, as always. Okay, gotcha. I'm ahead to, uh, to Otto. Welcome back, Sid. Finish with that log so we can call it a Right. He's also called Sid now. Otto will want to know what happened in Kostnis. I expect he'll be in the mess. All right. I mean, come on. Ooh, 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 ooh. How about you, baby? Uh, no, baby boy. All right. Again. What is this? Why is schoolboy swing harder? What is that supposed to be? Morient. Okay. I don't know what happened to Gav. I hope he's alive. It's not likely. Because Otto was in... Uh... But I don't know where Otto was. Where the hell did he come? Like, wasn't he inside the area? All right. Everyone knows him to be Sid now. I wonder why, though. Hello, Otto. All operations are suspended until further notice. Yes, Captain. I'll let the others know. Dorit. What happened to Taria? Uh, wait, Mr. Moogle. Nectar. You're wondering what this new board behind me is. All in good time, my friend. All in good time. Oh, no. This is going to be one of those hunt boards like an FF12. Who are you? Asta, a hopeless romantic. No works longer or harder than our Otto. You Otto. can scour the whole of storm and ash, and you won't find a better man. Somebody smitten. Escape from the slave markets. How'd you manage that? This is pretty big. I mean, this place is technically a giant ass. Uh, what do you call them? Uh, an airship, basically. It almost looked like the Ragnarok from FF8. I'm uh, here. I am just bragging about my Final Fantasy nod. No, I'm I'm just trying to make things more relatable to people who have played, you know, certain games. All right. What's up, Otto? Oh, there you are, Clive. Oh, he calls me Clive. Word of your adventures arrived this morning. Victor sends his thanks. <laughs> I doubt Kupka will miss the force he sent to catch me. Not a single one of the bearers we saved showed any interest in coming with us. No one seems keen to join hands with an outlaw. Any news while we were away? None worth mentioning. Gav's still alive. Gav is alive. In the Republican army. Should be back any day now. Understood. If anyone needs me, I'll be in the map room. And who is that? Still can't work that one out. There must be better places than the hull of a gutted airship to bury your nose in a book. Yet this is where she's chosen to be. Who is that? And I'm sure she has her reasons. These new characters, what the heck? Wait, before that, do we have... Okay, there we go. Wall of Memories. What is that? Okay, so we have the blacksmith. The shop, the, okay, Orchestrian, the already stone. Where, where's the tome? Do we not have the tome? Whatever, let me head over. I just kind of want to see if I can upgrade my gear. It has been five years and Clive did nothing to his gear. This would have been a perfect time to add, you know, new shit. Clive, is everything all right? Okay, so some people know him as Clive and the others basically know him as Sid. Oh, hey, what are you doing here? Everyone 
seem so happy to see us. It's good to be home. It is good to be home. Uh, all right. The Arate Stone. Does that one have blood? Hey, Ka whoa, Karen. Now what can I do for you? Ask about the hideaway. Oh shit! All right, this is where we can learn what happened. All right, so let's ask about the hideaway first. It's roomier than the old one was. Got my own stores, my own little counter, and thanks to you, thanks to you, love fighting the good fight. Plenty of demand for me wares. Okay. Okay. The only drawback is the constant bloody racket. If it's not Doris and Otto barking their orders, it's Blackthorn and Bardolph bagging away day and night. What? Okay, I assume he's talking about she's talking about the forge. Still. <laughs> That's a really weird way of putting it. Okay, self a pain in the ear holes, the price I have to pay to be Sid the Outlaw's partner in crime. I'd say I got myself a bargain. Alright, what about the past five years? Has it really been five years since we left the old place? How time I flies. Like it was yesterday. We're all waiting to treat Sid to a hero's welcome when Kupka's lot turned up. Not that we knew it was them. They just poured in like plague of like a plague of rats, cutting down anyone and anything that stood in their way. Bloods and blood and bodies everywhere. There was and a voice crying out for Sid to save us in the midst of of it all. I'll never forget those cries. Try as I might. You're our leader now, Clive. Okay. Promise me you won't let anything like that happen again. Promise me that come up May, Sid will save us. And he will. I have I have Ramu with me. Go on then. It's been five years, and the best you can do is still the guy I played. Oh, my God. All right. Oh, shit. Okay, we haven't gotten anything great. We have these, but I kind of don't want to... Whoa. What are these? Increases experience earned by 15%. Gill earned by 35? Ability points. Oh. You know what? Rubbing me blind, you Here's know. what I'm gonna do. It'd better all be here. You're rubbing me blind, you know. Okay, I spent a lot of money there. I did. I know I did spend a lot of money there, but I did it for a reason. These are all so amazing. Wait, hang on. So, all right. So basically, I I swapped out. What the hell did I swap out? I think it was this. Yeah. Okay. The cleric's medallion. No, no, it wasn't. What the hell did I swap out? Well, it doesn't matter anymore. Anyway, so I got this because it increases the guild that we get. So we can always just earn back our money. Uh, this one is for EXP. Perfect. And then this last one is for the wages of, uh, of Warcraft. I feel like in the long run, these would be more important than um, all of these. Uh, wh whether they increase the damages of rising flames and whatever and whatnot. But I don't know. I feel like these are good for like grinding stuff out. So I'm going to use them for a bit just so that I can level up and, you know, make uh, make some improvements to whatever I have. All right. I don't understand. I mean, like, it, it, to me, it just seems like if they have better stats, might as well equip the sword, right? I, I don't have a reason to keep Invictus on. Although, I noticed that in order to get the Flame Tongue, I did need to craft uh, the, shmi the, the, the sh Schmittar? The Schmittar? Uh, I don't know. One of the swords that was also purple. So, I don't know. That might mean something. Let's head to the forge and see what it means. Is he still alive? Oh my god, he's alive. Okay, I can ask about the hideaway and about the past five years. Alright, let's do that. Things here ain't too bad. Okay, things here ain't too bad, I suppose. I got a decent hammer, a decent anvil, and a... An apprentice that knows his hammer from his cock. <laughs> what? Okay. Sorry, that caught me off guard. Okay. Oh, and the furnace is all is all right and all. Thanks to old Sid's bellows, the gods only know how I keep the coals hot enough out here on the mirror on the mirror without them. Not with bloody crystals, that's for sure. No, I reckon you won't find a forge like this, like this one anywhere else in the twins. I count myself lucky to work it. Thanks for keeping me on. You need anything? Give us a shout. He changed so much. All right, this. Gone already. <laughs> I think he's sharpening a sword or something, or I don't know what the actual term is, but it's like it's so, 
It's so apparent in my left my left ear cup. It's so annoying. <laughs> okay, what have you forgotten already? I haven't. I haven't. Okay. It was a right pain in the ass getting uh, getting this place into shape, especially with the mess we were in. Not that it was anything new for those of us who put the old hideaway together. So, that don't mean I intend on doing it again. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Eleven bolts, there you go. See? Flame tongue. The flame tongue is exactly what we need. In order to see, we, the storm cry. So, storm cry was the first one. Eleven bolt is this one. It's a plus ten, I think. All right, let's get it. It lost you a good while. Okay, so we have n a new sword, basically. Yeah, the rest, and the rest that hasn't been that great. Athanasi. You told me you could fire a forge without a crystal or a bearer before I came here. I have taken you for a madman. But no, here it is. The secrets in the bellows, you know. They're Master Sid's own design. Of course. Uh, the other Master Sid. Of course, Sid is uh, always known to be um, one of the inventors. He's like the smart guy who knows how to knows his way through gears and stuff. Almost in every single Final Fantasy. Now that I think about it, well, except eight. Jackin, amateur twi twitcher. Look, Sid, Squeaks wants to meet you. I I can't keep him, can I? Can't I? That's a rat, bro. I mean, okay. Whatever makes you happy. Okay, Vivian. I just read the name. Speak with Vivian. The map room. Uh. All right. Before I go exploring everywhere else, let's. Uh, I think we should speak to Vivian. Once the hole swept. But only after I get rid of all these uh, new notifications of shit. Oh, who's this? Maeve. Get Chat with Maeve. All right. Buy a round for the hall. Wow. <laughs> Am I getting on? Ah, oh, about as well as you'd expect of a barmaid pouring sour ale for penniless outlaws in the middle of the Deadlands. And it'd be worse than that if Molly here didn't make the best stew this side of Stone here, even if it is mostly just yesterday's leavings. <laughs> Don't tell her you heard that from me, though. Okay, that's nice. I ain't gonna do any of the oh, other crap. Not leaving already, are yes, you? I am. I'm not spending that kind of money. Our terms. Okay, that makes me a little sad, honestly. <laughs> okay. Alright. Well, I should be getting back to it. Clive's Chambers. Alright, so this is my chambers. Wow, I got a big ass room. What the heck? Wall of Memories. The Oath? Oh, there. Created the day Clive pledged his allegiance to Sid. This crystal shard transfixed with twin daggers is a powerful reminder of a promise made, a friendship forged, and a legacy inherited. That is so nice. Wow. Is that the only thing I have? Oh, it is. Holy moly. So I can collect a bunch of shit here. That is going to be so cool. But we don't we don't have access to the ATL anymore or at least the the previous stuff. That kind of sucks. I wish I did all the side quests before uh finishing it up. I I thought I'd be able to or at least I, I thought they'd be available at the very, like, after we finished that entire section. At least I did all the ones in Northreach. So I did get a chance to explore a lot of the side quests, you know? Vivian. I trust I'm not intruding. Back from your mission? I'm beginning to think your habit of surviving cannot be attributed to luck alone. Who is this? One might say the same of you. Vivian Ninetales. Ninetales. I'll have you know that only four attempts have been made on my life, and none was especially memorable. So, to what do I owe the honor? 
Could it be that you've come for one of my lessons? What is that supposed to mean? Is that so hard to believe? Very well, then. Shall we start with the state of the realm? Oh, here we go. To absolutely no one's surprise, she finds herself at the mercy of armies and outlaws. Well, mostly armies. Though that's not for want of trying, is it, Clive? But the real question is, how did we get here? Exactly. I'd like to know. All right, what happened? Some breaks dominion over northeastern storm has endured. Recent days have seen the blight rest ever more land from her grasp. For which reason she has continued to wage war on her rival across the strait, hoping to claim less blackened pastures. But Odin would sooner pawn his sword than Walud relinquish Ash. And the Empire pays dearly for every blade of grass bent beneath Sambraqua boots. Little wonder then that Sylvester set his sights on the Crystalline Dominion, an altogether easier target, possessed of no less ether. Okay. It was five years ago, while you were busying yourself with the destruction of Drake's head, that the Empire made its move, subjugating its theretofore neutral neighbor. A nation which could legitimately claim to be the center of the world. Certainly, there is no better place to stage an army. From there, the Holy Empire's reach spans the Twins. The Non-Aggression Treaty was the only thing keeping them in check. But if they truly broke the pact without provocation, it is only a matter of time before others reply in kind. The Holy Empire. The Dalmechian Republic, the Kingdom of Walud, and of course, our friends in Yaran. Who will be left standing, I wonder, when the last drop of blood is spilled? This is so interesting. Wow. You were born in Twinside. Do you not fear for your home? Oh, dark clouds are wont to gather over the Dominion. Yet, in spite of it all, she has ever endured. And when the storm has passed, I am confident she will remain. Now, as to the matter of payment for today's lesson, complete a simple errand for me and we shall consider ourselves even. Even? Right. Return this volume to old tomes in the shelves. Tell him it was... Um, adequate. Alright, cool. Tomes is still alive. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to visit our resident historian. All right. So that was very interesting lore. Wow. So it, it got really complex later on. The Empire invaded uh, the southern border, which essentially was a neutral nation. It's kind of like if Russia were to invade. Was it Switzerland? That was a neutral nation. Anyway, something like that. I, I, I don't know much for world politics. Anyway. Let's go talk to the uh, resident historian of oh, Vallis. What a study! Holy crap! Harpocrates. Lawsman Harpocrates. <laughs> Lawsman. Now that is a name I have not heard for a long time. So long, in fact, I had half forgotten it was mine. Welcome home, Clive. You were missed. As always. I believe this belongs to you. Vivian asked me to return it. My sword looks really cool, by the way. Ready? <laughs> Our resident scholar devours books faster than young Tet does lemon tarts. Would that I could do the same. But alas, I no longer possess the necessary constitution for such indulgence. Either in words or tarts. Hmm. That said, I have continued my search for mention of the creature you encountered at Drake's Head. But without access to the great libraries of Oriflam or the Dominion, I regret that I have been able to find little and less. I am sorry. Please, don't apologize. I'll send word to our associates. See if they can't furnish you with more books. I fear it is not more books that I require, but the right ones. Mayhap we look in the wrong places. There are still libraries to the north. I'll see what I can do. 
You are too kind. There are not many in this world who would indulge the whims of a tired old historian. Not too tired to go filching Kubo nuts, though. Oh no, they're kids. Pocket for him. Nix him off the Moogle. Hush now. We all know there's no such thing as Moogle. <laughs> <laughs> The twins seem well. Aye. Yet they laugh far too little for one so young. The loss of their parents weighs heavy on them, however well they hide it. Who are their parents? Some took much from us that night. From some more than others. And the wounds that remain. They are not quick to heal. Then we gotta kill Titan. Which is why we must give them all the time they need. That we must. Just as I must give you the time you need to recuperate. Good day, Clive. Good day. Gav will be back soon. I should get some rest while I can. All right, let's talk to uh, Harpocrates. Okay, ask about the hideaway. Ask about the five years. All right. Look around you. Okay, while it's still a far cry from the Imperial Library in Oriflam. In five short years, we've amassed more volumes than most men or women hope to see in their lifetime. No longer the tales they contain hidden away from all but the privileged. We have liberated them that they may fill the minds of all who hunger for knowledge. Steve. Still, there is much more out there, and as long as I draw breath, I shall continue to gather what Why? I can. Why, one day a chronicle of your own adventures might even grace the shelves, or failing that, the floor. <laughs> okay, how about the five years? It has been difficult, certainly. When Titan visited his wrath upon us on that dreadful night, we lost much. He robbed us not only of our home and our loved ones, but of that which Sid fought fiercest to preserve, our hope. Hope that we might never have found again had you not taken his name and become our light in the had darkness. You not let us hear? To Benumir and the Invincible, where among the ghosts of the fallen, our journey can continue. So this airship thing is called the invincible here in the belly belly of a leviath of a leviathan untouched by the passing of a thousand years wait 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 wait, wait. so what is it called invincible or leviathan whatever here in the belly of a leviathan untouched by the passing of a thousand years does our hope burn brighter than ever and here may it burn for a thousand more all right ask about tet and crow i'm assuming those are the twins right they might be I still remember. Okay, I still remember the first day I met Ted and Crow, chasing their father about the hideaway one moment, clinging to their mother's kirtle the next. The twins' love for their parents was something to behold, so fierceful and pure. When they passed, I feared the void they left in the children's lives could never be filled. Neither spoke nor smiled for years, hiding themselves away here in the shelves to bury their sorrows in the leaves of these tones. And thank goodness they did. For I believe the stories proved a welcome distraction, as over time their pain faded, and now they laugh and frolic as they once did, if not with more vigor. They remind us that no matter how deep our wounds, we all have the capacity to heal. That is a very beautiful line. No matter how deep the wounds, we all have a capacity to heal. And that happiness lost may be found again. Okay, that was very, very well put. I have compiled some new entries. If you would like to see them. Okay. Now this, I believe you will find most interesting. A revelation? What? The Continental Accord. Okay, an international pact made at the dawn of the present era in which matters such as treatment of bearers and establishment of realm-wide currency were laid out. It's formed, it, it formed the basis of much of Valestian society as it stands today, including the branding of bearers and their status as non-persons. It, it also put in place a universal calendar marking a symbolic... Okay, yeah. We are aware of that. Valestian calendar. And the founder. Okay. Okay, this is a rather long entry. What is this? Okay, fear and uncertainty... uncertainty reigned in those early years following the sins of Zemeckis. Not wanting to further incur the wrath of the heavens, the few who f survived the fall took to wandering the land and spurning magic and states of the shadows, and so they lived for decades. One man, however, grew tired of this life, 
if it could be called that, and after bidding his companions farewell, climbed a grassy knoll overlooking a forest of beech and alder. Here he gathered a pile of rubble and used it to build a humble shelter in which he spent the night. The next morning, however, instead of abandoning his work, as was his people's wont, what? He gathered more rocks, adding to the structure until the shelter had become a shack. This he continued for days, weeks, until the shack had become a home. At first, those few wanderers who passed the knoll would shun him, cursing the man under their breaths for his hubris. But as his estate grew, and one building became two, and two, three, the people began to slow their steps, and it was not long before some took to joining him on that knoll, gathering stones, building new lives, new destinations. This they did without magics or machines, without boon or blessing. They relied on naught but their hands, their backs, and their wills, and each other. And slowly, house gave way to village village to town and town to nation the man would one day die as all men do but those who remained continued his legacy expanded upon it and though his name was eventually forgotten his spirit lives on this day in the hearts of all rosarians moss the chronicler he was mentioned in the very like start of the game if you have a question for me i should be happy to answer it said the outlaw all right, leader of the faction believed responsible for the shattering of Drake's head in 873. With this single act of infamy, Sid's name quickly spread to the four corners of Alistheia and beyond. Sid the Outlaw. Leader, okay, so Sidolphus Telamon, leader of the hideaway and dominant of Ramu, Warden of Thunder. His plan to create a world where bearers and dominants could die on their own terms meant destroying the Mother Crystals, an act of blasphemy that would be that would see him denounced as an outlaw. It was during their mission to f to fell Drake's head in 873 that Sidolphus lost his life to a beast from the beyond, passing the title Sid, the outlaw, onto his protege, Clive. Uh, it's still a little sad. Vivian Ninetales. All right, let's learn more about her. A scholar and the strategist who makes her home in the hideaway, analyzing every shred of information that comes in from the wider world in order to divine the dispositions of the realm's armies and those who lead them. She offers her insight to Clive that he might better understand the lay of the land. The moniker Ninetales, of which she herself is fond, was gifted was gifted her by her fellow scholars in recognition of her ability to speak at length on almost any subject i see i see all right we have victor a friend of sid's and later clive's who keeps an ever attentive vigil on the comings and goings in dalmechia from his hometown of costnice or costness i think it's costness right a town located in the rugged northern reaches of the dalmechian republic though it was once a thriving trading post the coming of the blight has served to both discourage travelers as well as drive off longtime residents all that now remains are refugees fleeing from elsewhere. The black, markete the black marketeers who prey upon them and barely enough soldiers to keep the peace. Or rather, to pretend to when they're not being bribed to look the other way. The fall of the hideaway. An assault by Hugo Kupka, dominant of Titan, and his private guard on the first hideaway of Sid, the outlaw, in the year 873. The safe haven established amongst forgotten ruins long consumed by the blight was entirely destroyed and many of Sid's collaborators and the bearers they had freed from servitude were slain. That is so sad. And now we have the new hideaway, which is a beautifully looking uh, structure. Established under the leadership of Clive Rossfield, who took on the title of Sid after his former leader's passing and Titan's destruction of the old hideaway. Here, a community of like-minded individuals from across the realm has gathered to build a place where people can live and die on their own terms. Like its predecessor, it is built within fallen ruins deep within the deadlands of Central Storm. Decidedly unlike its predecessor, however, it is located in the center of the Lake of Benumir, across whose waters any invading enemy can easily be spotted long before their arrival. Unless, of course, it's Bahamut that flies in. I don't know what you can do about that. Anyway, persons of interest. All right, we have a lot of interesting stuff here. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna skip most of it and probably have like a separate episode of just, um, um, of just reading through a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, um, 
uh, why am I brain farting right now? Um, a lot of the lore, basically, the active time lords and whatever. I just want to read Clive, Joshua, and Jill over here. Maybe, maybe Torgo as well. Who the hell are we missing? Okay, anyway, Clive. After Sid fell and his hideaway was reduced to rubble at the hands of Hugo Kupka, Clive took on both his predecessor's name and role, becoming the second Sid the Outlaw and leader of the re-established resistance. Together with the other survivors and their new recruits, he continues Sid's mission to emancipate bearers and rid the realm of Mother Crystals. Joshua Rosefield, Rossfield, rather, dominant of the Phoenix and former heir to the Ducal Throne, Joshua was thought to have died at the hands of the second icon of fire during the disaster at phoenix gate however he is very much alive as you can see traveling the realm even now his true identity hidden by a heavy cowl and assumed the name the lord of margaris margaris i don't know why it's margaris or whatever jill warwick dominant of shiva and trusted confident of clive leader of the new hideaway together they continue sid's mission to emancipate bearers and without why aren't there a lot of uh Five years on. Okay. How much has changed about her? Doesn't look like much has changed. Okay. Five years on. Dominant of Shiva and Clive's childhood friend. After Clive and Sid spirited, spirited her away from the battlefield where she was being forced to fight for the Ironblood, Jill was placed in the care of the hideaway's talented physiker, Taria, who nursed her back to health. Five years have now passed since the fall of Drake's head, and she and Clive continue Sid's mission to emancipate bearers and rid the realm of Mother Crystals. I don't know why they added a, a, a new uh, entry. That was a little weird. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. To the shelves shall ever be open. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Not back a blink, and you're already off solving everyone's problems. It's Toria. It looks good, Clive. Goes well with the scowl. <laughs> I'd had that brand for so long. I'd forgotten what life was like without it. What it was like to be myself. And it's all thanks to you, Toria. The scalpel did most of the work. <laughs> ah, before I forget, a rider was here with a letter from Gav. Otto left it on your desk. Otto stole us. All right, I'll have a look. And then you get some rest. <laughs> the sword looks really cool, by the way. All right, what does Gav say? Oh, hello. What are you doing in my room? Otto was here earlier with a letter from Gav. He left it on your desk. Thank you. Let me read that. All right, the reading table. <laughs> Reports, letters, and other important missives addressed to Clive are delivered to the reading table in his chambers. New messages are always arriving, so make it a point to check the reading desk upon returning to the hideaway. Got it. The Republic's play. All right, from Gav. The Republican army marches on the Empire twin side, and the men of the Rock have been summoned to the front. Something big is brewing, I reckon. I see you're done to wear upon my return. Okay. What does Gav have to say? The Republican army is on the march, leaving Randala in Hugo Kupka's charge. With him and his men occupied with the defense of the capital, they're less likely to trouble us. Good news, then. It's more than that. This is our chance, the one we've been waiting for. But look how far we've come. All that we have here, our friends, the hideaway, are they not cause for joy? Five years. Five long years. If I could only command this power I've been granted, we might have achieved so much more. But each time I reach for it, it's like something is holding me back. Summoning an icon exacts a price not easily paid. Your body knows this only too well. It's merely trying to save you from yourself. And every burden I cannot bear falls to you. 
This mission of ours has made me question everything I thought I knew. But one thing has become abundantly clear. The crystals take more than they give. In exchange for momentary comfort, we must endure a lifetime of pain, war after war, loss upon loss. And now? Now they rob us of our very homes, leaving naught but dust and ash. But you're trying to change that. We are trying to change that. And to me, that's no burden. I know, but... Try not to forget. We're only here because Joshua gave us a second chance. It would be a pity to waste such a precious gift. Wait, do they know Josh was alive? He did. He was there. Yeah, they do. It wasn't an illusion. I heard him call out to Ultima. Oh my god, I'm getting chills. <laughs> if Joshua oh, is still alive, he'll be looking for that... that thing. Do you think he will ever come back? I know he will. And we must be ready when he does. That was a great speech by Jill, by the way. A world without mother crystals. To sit. All right, what's next? What's next? What's next? We're in for a long session, guys. Oh, wow. What is he wearing? And he got huge. What the fuck? How old sh should he be now? If he's five years younger than Clive. So the North is lost. So he's like 28, probably? I don't know. I knew that the blight spread ever more swiftly, Your Grace. But this. This is far, far worse than any could have imagined. It is only a matter of time before the twins are no more. marches ever closer to its end and here we chase shadows tell me brother are our efforts in vain i love joshua's new getup do we get to control joshua though is that a thing we controlled him for a bit 